Hi guys, this is Johnny Hunkins at Popular Hot Riding Magazine, and we are here in Phoenix, Arizona at Bear Brakes with our Laguna project car. Now, our Laguna, as you know, is a 75 model, but GM made about 7 million GMA bodies between 1973 and 1977, and they all came equipped with GM's 10 bolt, 8.5 inch ring gear style rear end. And um, it's a pretty beefy rear end. It's, it's worthwhile to keep if you're going to be doing a high-powered car. And uh, believe it or not, there's not too many brake systems out there that are capable of, uh, of, uh, of being installed on one of those rear ends. So uh, Bear has created this SS kit. And uh, you can see right here it's got the four-piston uh, S4 calipers. It's got the 12-inch uh, rotors, and it's got the parking brake internal into the uh, rotor itself. And today, we're here with Dutch Miller of Bear Brakes, and he's going to install this bad boy on our Laguna. I just love this Laguna. It's the project car that won't go away. <laughs> it keeps on giving. Now we've already got Bear's T4 brakes up front and they fit really nice inside our 17 inch year one rally wheels. We've been using those to great success on the autocross and on the road course. But in the back, we've been using the stock drums for all this time. And uh, you know, that's fine for a stock vehicle, but when uh, when the going gets tough and you know your temperatures start going up and you're doing really heavy braking in a brake zone, you you really need something that's going to be able to handle the heat. And for just twelve hundred ninety five dollars, uh, the S four kit makes perfect sense if you're uh, really serious about your driving. Well, if you want to put brakes in the rear of any car, you got to do a couple of things first before you get to the brake hardware. What's going on there, Dutch? What are you planning on doing here? This is a C-clip rear end, so I'm pulling differential cover off so I can pull the C-clips out. That allows me to pull the axles, and then I can pull the drum brake backing plates off and put our, our parking brake backing plate on. Excellent. Well, there's the rear end in our Laguna. And by the way, just so you know, we have a Detroit True Track uh, differential in there with 373 gears. And we have actually 28 spline axles, I think, in this particular car. Well, now that we got the axles out, it's time to take the drum brake backing plates off. Dutch, tell us what's going to happen now. First thing I need to do is disconnect the park cable and get that out of the way, and then disconnect the fluid line, get that off, then the backing plate unbolts and comes out of the way. And that's a 7 16 inch wrench. Take that fitting off. The next step is to put a little cap on the brake line to keep it from leaking. And normally you've got T-bolts in here from the factory, but at some point in the past, our uh, unit had been replaced with regular uh, bolts. So that is not a stock option, but we're reusing these anyway. This is the parking brake assembly. And tell us a little about what's going on here, Dutch. This is a real effective park assembly. It's one that's derived from 97 Corvettes, but we build components we need to bolt them onto the rear end housings, the live axles. So let's go put it on. We're going to tighten these two 19 millimeter bolts down to 85 foot pounds to be sure they're nice and secure.
Well, that's a really cool looking caliper bracket, Dutch. Tell me, what is that thing made out of? That's 6061 T6 aluminum that we have anodized and designed with the sliders in it so the caliper will follow the C-clip style axles that move inboard outboard. Now we just installed this caliper bracket on this kit, uh, but we glossed over something here. It is a floating style bracket. Uh, Dutch, tell us a little bit about what that does for us. With a floating bracket, it allows the caliper to slide on these pins because with a C-clip style rear axle, the axle can move inboard and outboard. You can see this movement here, and that would push the, pal the calipers, uh, the pistons back in the caliper. Uh, so this allows the caliper to follow the rotor as the axle moves in and out. Our brake system includes these really beefy 12-inch rotors. Dutch, tell us about these. This is a cast iron rotor that we have cast made for us. We do a little thicker cheek section here. Then we cross drill and slot them. It's a great visual effect and it also allows the outgassing of the pads to, uh, to not slow you down. It, it lets the gases escape. So this is 12 inches by 1.1 1 .1 inch. 1 .1 inch. Well, this is the heart of the rear brake system, the Bear SS4 caliper. It's got four pistons in it, but I don't know that much about it. Dutch, can you uh, fill us in on the details? Okay, what we've got here is a four-piston caliper. It's a billet made of 6061 T6 aluminum. We use stainless steel pistons and an easily available pad. So we do all the machine work on this thing to allow it to be bolted up to the floating bracket so it can follow the uh, axles as they move in and out on a C-clip style axle. Now tell us about the fluid inlet there. It looks like uh, something we've never seen before. This one's a little universal. This, uh, we've got bleeders on either end, so this can be used on either side of the car. But the inlet here is a, a, a residual pressure valve that allows, the, that allows it to keep a little bit of pressure on it so it can follow the rotor easier. It's a 12 millimeter bolt with a 19 millimeter head. We're torquing these down to 85 foot pounds. Okay, putting the lines on here, one thing you want to make sure of is that you don't get interference with frame rails, wheels, or any other suspension components as you're putting this on. Just make sure as you route them, you got it clear. Now to snug this up, you need to double wrench it, as Dutch likes to say. What size is that bottom one? 11 sixteenths or 17 millimeter. Now these parking brake cables come with the bare system, and they're actually designed for 64 to 72 GMA bodies. Uh, we're actually adapting them for the use in the 73 to 77. They're slightly different length, but you'll see how we cope with that here in a second. Dutch, go ahead and show us how that goes on.
Now, what we've done here is taken off this hook that normally goes around one of these holes here, and we've hooked it right here, and that's effectively uh, shortened it up enough for us f to get it all put together. We've already got the one already installed on the driver's side here. And of course, the end, we're going to tighten it all up, and it'll be nice and snug and operational. Before you bleed your brakes, you're going to want to put uh, some fluid in the reservoir. Uh, tell us what we've got there. What, do, what does the average guy need for his streetcar, and how is he going to do this? What we're using is a DOT 3 fluid right here. Uh, DOT 3 and DOT 4 are the good ones to use. Uh, a lot of people like to use the DOT 5, the silicon, but they're for show cars that won't eat the paint. The problem with those is that they're compressible, and they'll give you kind of a spongy pedal. So you want to stick with either a good DOT 3 or DOT 4 brake fluid. And now it's time to bleed the brakes, starting with the rear. Okay. Hold. Okay. Go ahead, do it again, and then tell me when you got it. Okay, hold. Okay. Hold. Again. Hold. Again. Hold. Again. Now once you finish bleeding your brakes, you're going to want to use the syringe that Bear includes with their kit for rinsing out the bleeder because you do not want to have the uh, brake fluid in the bleeder because it is going to eventually leak out and you're going to think you have a leak. So you want to take that, rinse it out with some water. We have a bucket here and then after he uses the water, he's going to put some air in it and then just dry out the inside of that bleeder. And then finally after that, he's going to wash down the entire caliper with water to rinse off any uh, errant brake fluid. Goodbye drum brakes. Now say hello to Bear Brakes Sirius Street SS4 brake system for the rear. Now you can get these for all different kinds of cars, not just the mid-70s GMA bodies. So you want to check the Bear website for that. But moreover, they make a perfect match for our T4 brakes, which were installed a couple of years earlier. You can see the entire story on the installation of our rear system in the July 2014 issue of Popular High Running Magazine.